It is certain that some models that were available for the Death Watch at the start of 10th edition will not be available come the Death Watch Codex. This has happened to Dark Angel players and in a massive swoosh and it's gone, loads of Age of Sigmar models stop being sold. So the Stormcast Eternals are not so eternal as first reported. And they aren't getting a told you so from players who dropped out of Warhammer Fantasy but more of a first time. So we can expect that the least played Space Wing faction, with the lowest win rate, about 42% according to Goonhammer stats, will lose some units and weapons, and they will become Legends units which are fine to play in 10th edition and 11th edition, probably, just not at tournaments. It wouldn't be the first time, and for Death Watch it happens so often that it has become the reason why they are the least played. People are reluctant to start a Death Watch army, the risk of the units and the kill team organisations becoming obsolete is strong. The rules and weapons allowances change at least once per edition for the Death Watch. And the whole kill team system just gets a massive rework so often. The build your own unit process as Vate the 9th edition went, and with it, so did a lot of people's viable units. Now they get grouped up under armor types, so there's no more mixing Inceptors with Intercessors. Already at the start of 10th edition we have seen some weapon options disappear. You can no longer have Storm Bolters or Plasma Pistols on your Death Watch veterans just to name a couple. That is because 10th edition is all about what comes on the sprue, supposedly. Then you see that there is a missile launcher option for the Death Watch veterans when there's no missile launcher on their sprue. Bit of an inconsistency, but to generalize things a bit more, combat weapons like power fists, power swords became long vigil melee weapons and your unusual shooting weapons became long vigil ranged weapons. That is what your plasma pistol and your flamer and your combi melter are now. If you had a storm bolter and a shield, I guess that's a regular bolter now and we can just pretend that the other barrel is for firing special ammunition out of. With the Dark Angels Codex out as an example of what a Space Marine supplement book looks like, we can look at what is missing from them and then guess what will go from the Death Watch. But what if the Death Watch don't get their own supplement book? There are absurd rumours of the Death Watch being merged with Grey Knights and Imperial Agents. So let's just think about that for a moment, shall we? Let's just consider it and logic out how that would look. The Death Watch have a small roster of elite units. Okay, Custodes have very few models on units, and they have their own codex. And for Death Watch, it would strip away all of the Space Marine units that you had. An Imperial Agents plus Death Watch plus Grey Knights only book, you wouldn't be able to take regular Space Marine units. The thing that they've been pushing us towards since 8th edition. You know, the thing the Combat Patrol is made up of. Maybe that speculation is based off like one Reddit comment. But the rumours are that they will become Imperial Agents, so then they could be allies to other Imperial forces. I could field them with my sisters again, even in competitive games. Okay, okay, it's not all bad if it happens. So like the existing Imperial Agents, there would be specialist units and characters that ally into any other Imperial army, including Space Marines. Now that would get weird and mean that you could have a Space Marine detachment with Blood Angels units added, so it's a Blood Angels army, and then also add in Death Watch units. That doesn't match the one chapter only that we've gone for already, but they wouldn't be Space Marines. You would have what is a Space Marine of the Death Watch, but without Oath of Moment. Their faction rule would change to be assigned agents. I cannot see it coming to that, so I want you to not freak out. Stop freaking out! It's fine. But then, we didn't get a points change in April 2024. Oh, fiddle dee dee! Suddenly, the rumors of a brand new codex with us in it are not so crazy anymore. Maybe we should freak out. The Dark Angels and the Space Rules got a points drop for their Terminators. The regular Space Marine Terminators got a points drop. The Death Watch Terminators did not. In fact, for all of the units, there were no changes. We'll see what happens. I'm willing to wait. I don't know how I would cope if all three of the main factions I talk about get their codex at the same time. I would probably explode. Now, not getting a points update is not too much of a surprise. Games Workshop just doesn't support Death Watch that much. At the start of 10th edition, the Death Watch rules were so overlooked, it was very much an oops about how broken they were. Games Workshop doesn't support the Death Watch with rules or points, not with new lore, or new models. We don't have many unique kits or units, aside from a couple, like the Big Bird. Our units come from mixing other Space Marine units. 
we have an upgrade sprue, but compare that to the Dark Angels. There is a unique upgrade sprue for them, and unique Terminate units, and several unique characters, and their unique Blade Guard, alternative of definitely not, Redeemed Fallen. Death Watch players are not the money whale people think Games Workshop is hunting. Death Watch players are the weird child that sits in the corner and makes their own unit out of scraps of other units. Games Workshop has tried to push us to be normal, as I'll explain towards the end, but for now, let's just get into the Dark Angels first, so you know what my starting point is for the Death Watch. The Deathwing Strike Master, introduced in the 9th edition codex. This never had its own model. It was an option to build from the previous Deathwing Terminator kit, and it was a unique to the Dark Angels Terminator Lieutenant. Fundamentally, it's been replaced by the new Terminator Captain. The Deathwing Command Squad is gone, so we can light a remembrance candle for the Deathwing Champion, the Deathwing Apothecary, and the Deathwing Ancient. With the removal of the old Deathwing Terminator kit, so goes the Command Squad upgrade. These were crazy tough because they could resurrect a destroyed Terminator every turn. Like, imagine if we could add an Apothecary to the Proteus kill team and bring back a 4 wound Terminator with Storm Shield every single turn. Haha! <laughs> crazy, right? Ha, uh, we can do that. You can do that. Do that. The Ravenwing Talon Master was another kind of Lieutenant, but in a land speeder. Again, as Games Workshop has stopped selling the land speeder, he goes away too. So that gives us a basis to work with. Alternate builds for characters will go to Legends and no longer be sold. Upgrade sprues for kits that are no longer sold will also go. Captain Artemis may probably be destined for Legends. He has had no new lore since his reintroduction to 40k at the end of 7th edition. Previously, he was in the big scale Inquisitor game, kind of cool. Then he moved over to be in Death Mask, and that was it. He's a made to order model at the moment and doesn't appear on Games Workshop's website. Made to order models can sell better for Games Workshop than keeping the stock going. So, using him as is in Legends, it's okay. Even now, you can have a firstborn captain with a combi weapon who are using the Legends rules. And that's fine, unless you're telling me you're planning to take Death Watch to a tournament. It could happen. The win rate has to come from someone playing. He may get a new Primaris version, but not every new Marine has been Primaris. Ragnar Blackmane was when he and Gazgol killed each other before they both came back to life. Castellan Crow wasn't, and he is a Space Marine, just a Grey Knight Space Marine. They're still Space Marines. Belial's new model wasn't Primaris. So a new Watch Captain Artemis may be our one new model with the Codex, if we even get one, but I think he'll end up in Legends. The Watchmaster should stay. He's still being sold on the website, no mention of anything changing there. I think for a Watchmaster of the Death Watch, he needs to carry at least one timepiece? That was a missed opportunity for a pun on what is otherwise a fancy man in a cloak. Kill Team Cassius is less certain. It sells well as a box. Now they previously dropped it as a unit you could use in games for 8th edition, then its models became part of a Proteus kill team, but it came back as its own unit in 9th edition. In 10th edition, it is very much overlooked by players, and I have a video on how you can exploit some interesting rules with Kill Team Cassius. It's currently online only in most countries, that could mean it is super popular and sold out, or it could mean that they don't plan to continue it. They are older models from 7th edition in 28mm scale, while the newer 40k models are in 30mm scale. That includes the firstborn marines that are shown in the Horus Heresy. Their unit rules could also do with a bit of a rework. The models with chain swords and power swords, yeah, they're long vigil melee weapons, but they have the same stats as the generic combat weapon or this unit. So the guy with a frag cannon has a tiny knife that has the same stats as the power sword. That is probably an error, and that has remained even after the unit was fixed since the start of the edition, so that the Heavy Flamer was strength 5 instead of its initial strength 2. Check out my Index Errors series. But it may just be Games Workshop overlooking the Death Watch by default. The Death Watch Veteran box will probably stay. That sells okay. It came in at the end of 7th edition before Primaris and showed off the lovely Mark 8 armor. It's turtlenecks. It has a lot of parts in the box. Now there is still a missile launcher option in the rules. That will probably disappear as a missile launcher isn't part of a kit. If you have any missile launchers in your Death Watch veteran squad, use the missile launchers you have under frag cannon rules. Very similar weapons, but they should still be sold. It is the main Death Watch unit. 
The Death Watch Terminators are a mix of regular and assault Terminators with a plasma cannon option from the Dark Angels, and they have more heavy weapon choices than normal. These are almost certainly going to disappear. The Deathwing Command Squad unit is gone, the Dark Angels Deathwing Terminators lost access to the Lightning Claws and Thunder Hammers, the Death Watch Terminators will probably have the same limitations if they do stick around. Or they could stay only as the standard Marine Terminator kit, but the maximum three heavy weapons that you can have is what comes in the box. So one heavy flamer, one assault cannon, one cyclone missile launchers. So no plasma cannon. They used to be sold as their own box, which was just the regular Terminators and three upgrade sprues. When the new Terminator kit came out, they were no longer sold, so the 10th edition index is probably a holdover. I think most likely they want people to use the standard Space Marine Terminators and that is why the points didn't drop for the Death Watch Terminators or the Proteus Kill Team. Not that the whole sub-faction is going away or that we're getting moved to Imperial Agents, but Games Workshop wants to discourage people from trying to acquire models to make into these units. The Corvus Black Star will pretty safely stay. It's still sold, but its points will be bad because Games Workshop has slowly realised over the last few editions that flyers don't work well in a rule set designed around infantry. 8th edition had some big problems where you could block movement, so because, at least in that edition, the flyer's base was still part of the models, it was an enemy unit, you can't go over it, you can't go through it, you can't charge it and attack it unless your models can also fly, so people were taking flyers just to stop you from moving underneath the flying vehicle, but it will still be sold. I very much expect so. The Death Watch Veteran Bikes will definitely go. The Space Marine Bikes that the Death Watch Veteran Bikers were based off have gone away. That unit is no longer sold. The Ravenwing Black Knights, they are uniquely sculpted bikes, not based off the pre-existing Space Marine Biker set. That is why the Dark Angels Unique Bike Unit remained, while the Death Watch Unique Bike Unit will disappear. The Death Watch Veteran Bikers were just the Death Watch Upgrade Sprue on the now Legends Space Marine Bikers, so this unit will be sent to Legends 2. They may still be usable in the Proteus Kill Team, but we can't be certain. That may end up being made up specifically of 5 Terminators and 5 Veterans. So what about all those Kill Teams? The Proteus Kill Team, the Fortress Kill Team, the Indomitor Kill Team, they will likely stay. I think they're unlikely to revamp the whole kill team system in a codex, but what each individual unit is made up of may change. So I don't think we're going to see the pick the models you want to make the kill team you want that we've had in previous editions. It's just going to be the kinds of cards we have already, but the unit composition may be different. So if the bikes are not sold anymore, the Proteus kill team may be a fix of either 5 veterans and 5 vanguard veterans with jump packs, or 5 veterans and 5 terminators, or five veterans and five assault terminators, just so the kill teams can be made with the set contents of two boxes, if that's a route Games Workshop goes for. Hopefully these different types of Proteus kill team would have at least unique points, if not unique names and data sheets. The Fortis kill team, hopefully they would let Infernus Marines into the Fortis kill team, but they didn't let Desolation Marines in and they'd been around since the end of 9th edition. Or the very cheap Infernus Marines from the Hachette Combat Patrol magazine, no launch date yet announced, that would be very convenient to get just one or two models of them and put them in kill teams. But I don't know which route Games Workshop's gonna go down for the Death Watch. They could go with the, oh we're just gonna ignore Death Watch and leave them as they are. That seems to be their stance for the moment. Alternatively they can do what they've always done in the past few editions and completely rework the kill team system. Okay. Those are the unique Death Watch units and what is likely to happen to them. But that is what made my where to start with Death Watch video difficult because so many of the units may change or be removed. I tried and it should work for the Codex Death Watch. Remember that Legends units are still valid. If you look at the new Terminator Captain and think, oh wow, a sword or a fist, how special and unique compared to a regular Terminator. The Index version has Lightning Claws. And it seems daft to think that what is a valid build stops being valid five minutes later because Games Workshop no longer includes some bits of plastic on a model that they sell. But how does this affect my advice on where to start with a Death Watch army? So the regular Space Marine units should stay. Especially after 8th edition onwards, they emphasised in the law that Death Watch now have their own Primaris Marines. Either way, regular Space Marine units are okay. If things got weird, then you could use the aggressors as terminators or vice versa. We'll have to wait and see what we officially get, but with no points update, what can I say? I love an overlooked underdog.
Here is my video explaining how you too can start a Death Watch army. My darlings and viewers, purge the alien. <laughs> 